God glorious day, my beloveds. God glorious day. Oh, how blessed. How blessed are we to be alive. How blessed are we to be of sound mind. How blessed are we to have this day, to have every breath of life, breathing in the presence, awake, aware, reawakening to God. Ah, so nice to be here. So in this meditation, I'd like to begin with a scripture that has been encouraging me. I have this tiny, it's hard to see, I have this tiny little bookmark, or not bookmark, book holder thing that I got a few years ago. And it says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. And you know, for us truth students, fear means false evidence appearing real. So for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Here is a metaphysical truth, my beloveds, in the book of Timothy, chapter two, verses one through seven. So I'd like us wherever we are to know that we are rooted and grounded in the one power and the one presence that is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. So let's take a cleansing breath. We're going to close our eyes. We're going to ground ourselves. If there is a place on our body that is ailing, we're going to place our hands on our hearts, wherever it may be. We are going to send love to that place because we are the living embodiments of God. We are the cells in the body of God. And we live and move and have our beingness in God. Oh, so let's begin. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. Oh, let's breathe that in. And I'm going to say affirmative phrases and you're going to speak them silently or out loud in your space. So our first statement of truth is, I am a fearless spiritual being, safe in God's universe. I'll say that again. I am a fearless spiritual being, safe in God's universe. Breathe that in, my beloveds. We're going to say it again. I am a fearless spiritual being, safe in God's universe. This is the truth, my beloveds. This is the truth regardless of what is happening. This is the truth whether the economy is quote unquote tanking. This is the truth whether there is political unrest, racial divides, COVID-19 numbers going up. This is the truth. I am a fearless spiritual being, safe in God's universe. I want you to breathe that in. Take a cleansing breath. <sighs> release, release all the tension, all the fear, false evidence appearing real. Release that and know, my beloveds, on this day that the Lord has made. I am a fearless spiritual being, safe in God's universe. And because there are numbers rising and COVID-19 seems to be getting worse, this is a reality, we don't deny reality, but we know the truth. And the truth is that we have healthy, whole, vital body temples. We are expressing divine radiant health right here and right now. We'll say that together. I am expressing 
divine, radiant health right here and right now. Again, my beloveds, I am expressing radiant, divine, radiant health right here and right now. Again, my beloveds, I am expressing divine, radiant health right here and right now. Yes, we are. Because God, infinite intelligence, the quantum field, your higher power, the source of all life, created you in divine perfection, physical perfection, in your mother's belly. Every atom and cell of your body temple is now expressing divine vitality, strength. We embrace a strong physical immune system because we have spiritual immunity. So my beloveds, let's know that. I have spiritual immunity. Let's say it again. I have spiritual immunity. Let's know that again together. I have spiritual immunity. And what is spiritual immunity? Spiritual immunity is knowing our oneness with God. Spiritual immunity is choosing spiritually minded, high minded thoughts, power thoughts that inoculate us against fear and dis-ease. Let's say it again, I have spiritual immunity against any mental dis-ease. Let's know that again. I have spiritual immunity against any mental dis-ease. We are strong, my beloveds. We are told in the scriptures, which is a metaphysical text, we know that the Bible is the journey of the soul to awakening. And we know that the Most High divine intelligence did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. So let's know this together. I am expressing a sound mind. Let's say it again. I am expressing a sound mind. Let's know that again. I am expressing a sound mind mind. Sound means a balanced mind, a peaceful mind, a harmonious mind, a joy-filled mind, a strong, courageous, brilliant mind, because our minds are one with the mind of God. So we know what to do, where to go, what to eat, how to exercise our bodies, we know how to build our physical immunity and our spiritual immunity because we are of sound mind. Let's breathe that in. I am of sound mind. I am of sound mind. <sighs> and God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power. I have a spirit of power. Let's know that together. I have a spirit of power. I have a spirit of power. I have a spirit of power. Spiritual power and dominion are now flowing in and through us. We can overcome anything. We can make it through this time on planet Earth. We can, we are spiritually powerful beings because we choose to align with the one power, God, infinite intelligence, the quantum field, the source of all good. I am a powerful spiritual being that can overcome anything. Let's know this together. I am a powerful spiritual being that can overcome anything. Let's know it again.
I am a powerful spiritual being that can overcome anything, no matter if the world shakes and trembles, no matter if this body passes away, no matter what the economy is doing, no matter who stays and who leaves, no matter what is appearing on the screen of my life, I am a powerful spiritual being that can overcome anything because I am one with the only power and presence. So before we end our meditation, place your hand on your heart. I am one with the only power and presence in the universe. I am one with the only power and presence in the universe. I am one with the only power and presence in the universe. And so it is, my beloveds, coming back to this time and place, inoculated with the love of God, the power of God, the presence of God, and the joy of God. Let's open up our eyes and be here right now. Namaste. And so it is. Amen. I am deeply humbled to be with you uh, this morning. I am always, I'm in awe of God's work in my life, God's hand in my life. And I've been thinking and contemplating the talk. I typically write several sermons. I kind of go off of my ideas, but I wait for divine inspiration. And I'm so grateful that about two and a half years ago, I became very serious um, with practicing meditation. And my meditation practice is not very long. Um, sometimes it's 10 minutes, sometimes it's 15 minutes, but I try to do it several times a day. So, so sometimes I'll succeed at one 10 minute slot. And at other times I could, I would meditate or at meditate five times throughout the day, 10 minute slots. But I've found that it puts me in alignment. It cleanses my soul. It protects me from all anxiety and fear. And when I contemplate where we are on the planet right now, COVID numbers have go are going on. California, where many of my beloved family and friends, my brother, my best friend, uh, many of my friends live, has been shut down. El Paso, Texas, I think it is, has been decimated by the appearance, well, of death, the finality, the appearance of the finality of death and dis-ease and fear. So throughout this pandemic, I recently had, I had a friend during the pandemic who told me that she felt that I was cavalier because I have been so spiritually strong and, and fearless. I, I have not been afraid throughout all of the pandemic, all of these months. And recently I started to really feel the collective fear of the world, the collective fear of the nation, as, we can, as these numbers continue to rise. Just when we thought we have an answer, it's almost over, it seems like it's getting worse. So I said to the Most High, what do I say? What message do you have for me and my beloved spiritual family for this Sunday? And it was very quiet. I wasn't getting my very strong intuition until this morning. And this morning while I was meditating, I received that we can boost our spiritual immunity through prayer and the reading of Psalm 23. I received Psalm 23. So as I've been thinking and writing, the Psalms are medicine for the weary heart. They were songs that were written by David 
And there are three specific that are very important, that are very important during this time and that will immunize, in, immunize us from any appearance of dis-ease, mental, spiritual, physical, or emotional. The Psalms are Psalm 91, Psalm 46, and Psalm 23. My focus will be the metaphysical interpretation of Psalm 23 as a supplement, a spiritual supplement that can boost our spiritual immunity. So I will read the Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me to lie in green pastures. He leads me besides still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, Lord God. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness, love, and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This Psalm, Psalm 23, is an all round mental treatment. In New Thought, we see prayer as, a, as affirmative mental treatment. It treats the appearance of disease. And as truth students, we know that worry, fear, doubt, shame, confusion, lack of motivation, depression, apathy, we know these things to be diseases dis of the mind. So this psalm is a mental treatment. It is an affirmative, a complete affirmative prayer. Thousands get consolation from it, who've never heard of the signs of mind. They've never heard of unity or new thought principles, but there is a deep intuitive understanding that this psalm, the speaking, the praying, the meditation upon this psalm can inoculate you from the valley of the shadow of death. So what is appearing on the screen of our lives is this appearance of COVID-19 and it is the shadow of the valley of death. It's very <laughs> easy right now to think of your mortality. It's easy to worry about your friends and loved ones. It's easy to worry about the state of the nation and people losing their lives to COVID. So my beloveds, we are in the dark night of the soul. We are in the shadow of the valley of death. But I'm here to tell you today that God, source, your higher power, the quantum field, infinite intelligence, whatever you may call it, is the vaccine that will cure all that ails you. So as we pray, pray this psalm, it's very important to understand its powerful meta metaphysical symbol symbolism. So our thoughts are, are our sheep. Our thoughts are our sheep. To care for them personally is a huge, seemingly impossible task. But if we put them in the hands of the great I am, 
Jehovah, infinite intelligence, source, higher power, quantum field, it unburdens the mind. The realization that God is the provider of all is wonderfully peace giving. Realizing that God is our sustainment, God is our protection, God is the provider of all, produces peace in our bodies and minds and hearts. And when we have peace in our bodies and minds and hearts, we have spiritual immunity. I shall not want is a direct denial of the thought of lack. In new thought, in treatment, there is a tradition of speaking a denial. Sometimes something that is gri gripping you is so strong that you can't just say, I affirm prosperity. I affirm good health. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I did that in our meditation. But as truth students, there is a power in denial. So something you would say something like this. Even though I am in deep fear of dying of COVID, I know that there is a power and presence that controls this universe and I am one with it. Therefore, right here and right now, I am expressing divine, perfect, radiant health. So you state the thing that you're afraid of. You don't deny it, you state it. Even though I'm having crazy thoughts about bankruptcy, and homelessness and, and dying alone. I know, I know without a shadow of a doubt that I am prosperous, that I am whole, that every stranger I meet is a friend. So you say a denial, but you must speak an affirmation. You cannot speak the denial in the affirmative prayer and not speak the opposite. If you don't speak the opposite, the good that you desire to see manifest, you will get the thing, the negative thing you've spoken. So I shall not want is a direct denial of the thought of lack, which burdens so many minds at this time and keeps them symbolically in hell. As New Thought students, these Christian or Judeo-Christian terms that we grew up with, we know that there is a divine meaning behind the simple meaning. We're not talking about hell as a place. We're talking about a state of consciousness. And right now, at this time on planet Earth, what is the state of consciousness you would like to abide in? Do you abide under the shadow of the Almighty? Or do you abide by what the news is telling you and the numbers rising and the fear, doubt, and worry? No, no, we here at Unity in the City, we shall not want because we know that our burdens are lifted by the Most High. Green is symbolic of the newness and the freshness of spirit which constantly gives to the soul. The pastures, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. The pastures are the abundance of supply. The still waters are the peaceful states of thought in meditation. The still waters, I'll say it again, are the peaceful thoughts in the state of meditation. My beloved, we must meditate. We must pray affirmatively at this time, but we must meditate. For those of you who find that you cannot meditate, I ask you to set your timer and begin with one minute. Begin with 30 seconds. There have been studies done that when people actually say a spiritual statement, they are able to meditate longer. So God is my peace, God is my wealth, God is my health, that you're able to get into an alpha state, a delta state of mind where you can attune with God. So please attempt to meditate. Some people cannot meditate because of the turbulent thoughts that flow into their minds. All they need to say is the affirmation, he leadeth me.
beside still waters. He leads me beside still waters. In Psalm 23, we have an antidote. We have a vaccine for spiritual immunity. We have affirmations and denials. We have an anchoring of the truth of God. He leads me besides the still waters. The restoring of the soul is the strengthening of the subjective thought realm to divine harmony. Meaning, whatever confusion that we have been thinking, the race mind consciousness, the thoughts of humanity, the thought of fear that's on, that's gone from zero to 20 million decimals. We can bring divine harmony when we think about how God restores our, sto our soul and leads us besides the still waters. The still waters, my beloved, is the practice of affirmative prayer and meditation. The paths of righteousness are the open doors of communication between the mind of God and your mind. Righteous thoughts are not, this is not about morality, good or bad. This is about high-minded, God-centered thoughts. The paths of righteousness, as we pray affirmatively, as we meditate, we will be led to the paths of righteousness and open the doors of communication between God's mind and our mind. We will know what to do at this time during COVID. We'll know what to eat, how to exercise, where to go. A few weeks ago, I've been out and about. I wear my mask. I carry sanitizer in my purse. I sanitize my hands and wash them frequently. I'm taking my immune boosters, selenium. Everyone knows how crazy I am about selenium and zinc and vitamin D. But I woke up one morning and I was supposed to go to the supermarket to get my groceries. And I meditated. And in the meditation, I heard, don't go to the supermarket. And I thought, I did have, my ego mind had the thought, that's weird, why not? And then I heard again, don't go to the supermarket. And we all have um, six senses, beyond six senses. Some of us hear guidance, feel guidance, receive guidance. I kind of, I don't hear voices, but I kind of hear spirit. And I thought, I won't go. Okay, I won't go. So I went on a walk and I didn't do groceries that day. And as I reflected back upon that, maybe there was someone who had COVID in the supermarket. Maybe I've been going since the pandemic began, but in meditation, I received the guidance not to do something. We will be led upon the paths of righteousness, that open communication between God's mind and our mind when we allow ourselves to sit in the presence of God, to be led by the still waters, and the still waters is the practice of meditation and affirmative prayer. This affirmation of divine guidance is a mighty factor in thought unification, and we can't make it, we cannot make it too often. We must unify with the mind of God. When you're watching CNN or Fox or anyone else constantly all day, you are not uniting with the mind of God. You are not lying on the green pastures and laying near the still waters. You are not on the path of righteousness, high-minded thinking. We must feed ourselves in order to boost our spiritual immunity. We must feed ourselves with God. The valley of the shadow of death is that vague darkness which envelops the mind when the thought of death presents itself. And my beloved, isn't the thought of death everywhere? <laughs> this is what COVID represents the appearance of the end of our lives. But as truth students, we know whether I'm here next year or not, I am eternal. 
I live, move, and have my beingness in God, and God is eternal. But as, I'm, as I abide in this body, as I still abide in this body temple, we are seeing this malaise, in malaise, a sickness, a sorrow, a sadness, because the mass mind, the collective mind is so afraid of death. We're all like, COVID, COVID, I want to survive. You could have the germ, I could have the germ. I'm not minimizing this fear, but I cannot rest in this fear. I must abide in the almighty. So I can't allow this vague darkness to fill my heart, my mind, my soul, and to live in trepidation. Because if I live in this constant trepidation, I will get sick. By right of consciousness, I will attract it or my immune system will lower fear, doubt, and worry, i.e. stress, will infect my body, lowering my immune system, therefore making me open to any kind of illness, dis-ease. So I cannot allow the shadow of death, the vague darkness that envelops the mind of man, that envelops my mind, to enter into my consciousness. It's going to happen, but it can't be more powerful than God. Do you have faith in God or do you have faith in COVID? Do, do you have faith or, or worry about what's happening with the president or is God your president? We must choose. The valley of the shadow of death is that vague darkness that can envelop the mind when thoughts of death present itself. A denial of it as evil is to open the door to a fuller understanding that under all circumstances, God is present. My beloved, even in the appearance of COVID-19, even in the appearance of death, even in the appearance of rumblings of the economy, job loss, fear and trepidation, the Lord our God is present. You don't have to use that word. You can use my source is present, my higher power is present, the quantum field that I am in alignment and one with is present. The words don't matter. This presence is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The words mean nothing. We must be spiritually mature and know that it's just a symbol. But this source created you, it created me, and it will sustain us no matter what. Sustain us no matter what. God is always present. The rod means power. So a shepherd would use a rod and a staff to get sheeps out of crevices. So, you know, the sheeps would walk through valleys and fields, but up little hills and crevices and sheep could get, could get stuck, especially when their coats are very full, they're kind of heavy. So they can easily, they're very weighty, so they can get stuck in crevices and little caves and caverns and they can't get out. So the shepherd will use his rod and his staff to get the sheep out. Another thing that I found out about sheep, sheep because of the way their noses are shaped cannot drink from lakes and ponds and little rivers and streams that are turbulent. The water gets into their nose, they could suffocate. So they must actually drink from still waters. So this is how much the presence of God loves us. He will still, it, she, the presence, whatever you call it, the thing itself, as Ernest Holmes says, will still the waters so you can drink and be filled with the nourishment of God. And when you are lost and stuck in a crevice, in a cave, or you've gone off the beaten path, the shepherd, which is the presence of God Almighty, will come and find you. His rod and his staff are a defense, a protection, and will scoop you out and, and hold you and carry you in its arms to safety. 
That is God. This is God. The shepherd's rock is a crook that is used for helping sheep out of crevices and out of other pitfalls. The staff is not a cane, but a heavy bludgeon with which the shepherd can slay wild animals that attack the sheep. The shepherd will protect you physically from wild animals. Metaphorically, COVID can seem like this wild animal that's attacking us. And God, our shepherd, will protect us from all anxiety, will protect, protect our bodies, will protect our abodes, will protect our loved ones. How and when? When we align with the presence of God, when we lie down between, beside still waters, when we take our nourishment in God through prayer and meditation, that alignment with the, with the mind of God becomes our shield and our buckler. We abide under the presence of the Almighty when we are doing our spiritual practices that become our disciplines. Comfort means consolation. It means to strengthen, to invigorate, to encourage. God will comfort us. Some of us will, will lose loved ones. Some of us may lose our lives to COVID. That's not what Martine wants. If I was goddess of the universe, no one would die. No one would be sick in my universe. But there are mysteries and things that I don't even understand as a truth student why people live and why they die, and some die. But I know that God is a help to all my needs. And I know and I believe and I have faith that God would comfort my heart if and when I would lose a loved one. And I know if I were to lose my body at this time, that the Most High would comfort my loved ones. God is an ever-present help, helping us with every need. God comforts and consoles our hearts. God comforts and consoles us from the negative thinking of fear, doubt, and worry. This means that God strengthens us. God invigorates us. God encourages us, but we must do our part. We must say yes to the presence. We must tune out the world and tune into the most high. The table prepared by God, and he will prepare a table, a feast, represents and is symbolic of the omnipresent substance, which is always with us in spite of what is appearing in our lives. The omnipresent substance and sustainment of God is eternal. It's like our breath. We've been given trillions of molecules of oxygen to breathe without a price. Oh, well, Martine, you weren't a good girl today or you were kind of mean and, and yelled at the guy who cut you off. So no oxygen for you today. Oh, Martine, you didn't meditate one morning or you got angry or you became very afraid. No oxygen for you today. No. God's omnipresent substance is ever available. We don't have to pay a price. We, you know, the sun shines on the murderer and the saint. God so loves us. The present so loves us that it gives us a choice but it always pours forth its omnipresence substance. And we can come to that substance with a thimble. Louise Hay can say, you can go to the ocean of abundance with a thimble, or you can bring a tanker, an army tanker, and fill it up with good. The choice is ours. But the omnipresent substance or ocean of good and abundance is always available. We choose the container that we bring. And at Unity in the City, we bring ocean 
liners and tinkers, a couple of hundred, and fill it up with the omnipresent substance of God, which is ever available. The oil that anoints our head is the joy that pours out into understanding when we realize the abundance of God's love. The oil that he, the shepherd, anoints the, she the sheep with. So oil, olive oil, during the time of antiquity was used as a medicinal healer. And since people didn't have things like all the stuff we can get in our pharmacies today, people would actually, after they put garlic and salt to a wound and herbs, they would pour oil over it because oil was a sealant. It was a protector. So this anointing of oil upon our heads is the protecting energy of God's love. God's love and joy. So he anoints our heads with oil. He, he prepares a feast table. The omnipresent substance of God is always available. The abundance of God, the peace of God, the joy of God the wholeness and health of God, and the love of God. This is the assured power and presence of spirit. We know that this eternal goodness shall always be with us. This is what praying the 23rd Psalm does for us. We are not alone. The eternal goodness of God will always be with us and it's this it inoculates us against fear when we read and meditate on this psalm this goodness will always be with us it is constantly bubbling up in the soul of our consciousness in our consciousness if we attune to god if we abide by the still waters we will always have this eternal goodness with us. It's with us whether we meditate or not, my beloveds. We have been given this unconditional bounty. So I don't want you to think that unless I meditate, the grace of God, the protection of God, the love of God is not with me. Not at all. That's human mind thinking. However, to tune into it with clarity to tune into it, to receive downloads and intuition and guidance. It behooves us. The day I didn't go to the supermarket, who knows what happened at the supermarket, but I was told not to go because I meditated. I followed my inner guidance system. So my beloveds, my homework for you this week, if you are not meditators, is to begin with a minute. Set your timer on an alarm that has lovely chimes so you're not jarred out of your meditation with a crazy alarm. And go into the silence and affirm the truth. God is my health. God is my wealth. God is my everything. And if you don't like the word God, because it doesn't matter, it's the same presence regardless of what we call it, my source is my health. The quantum field is my health. The thing itself is my help in every need. So Raleigh, I sent you, I don't know if it's possible, but I sent you the video and thank you. I would like to say something before you play it. This is a song, um, everyone, that is very, uh, the evangelical movement, their praise and worship songs are pretty incredible. Please replace the word Jesus with God, with source, with higher power. God is good. Call it what you will. It's the same I am presence that spoke to Moses and protects us. Amen. Thank you, Raleigh. Okay, yesterday we had choir rehearsal, but now we can sing it for real. Come on, help us sing this song. 
Here we go. The Lord is my shepherd, everybody. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Defender behind me. Y'all been practicing. I won't fear. I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. I'm filled with anointing. Thank you, Jesus. My cup's overflowing. My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. Jesus. I won't fear. Jesus right there. He always guides me. He always guides me. <laughs> Through mountains and valleys. Through mountains and valleys. His joy is refreshing. His joy is refreshing. Restores my soul. Restores my soul. With confidence, mercy and goodness, mercy and goodness. Ooh, oh, oh. Give me assurance, give me assurance. Oh, 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 that I'll see your glory, I'll see his glory. Oh, face to face.
you, my beloveds. I hope you, can everyone hear me now? I hope you enjoyed that. It's a evangelical praise and worship, but it's the same energy, the energy of knowing the one presence. So we are not alone. Spirit, God, quantum field, higher power, whatever you call it, it's the same presence. It holds us, it takes care of us. Meditate on Psalm 23, pray and practice going in to God and all will be well. Even if I lose my body, I am one with God and I am safe and we are safe. Amen. Thank you.